Hello and welcome to the Thursday, December 1st, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just posted a little bit unusual uh, diary. Uh, we publish this newsletter uh, once a week, the at-risk newsletter, and I'm looking at different vulnerabilities. Uh, found something odd uh, this week, uh, looking at sort of last week's vulnerability. There are 20 vulnerabilities that were released in Netgear and D-Link routers. For Netgear, it affects the R7000P router, different firmware versions. And for D-Link, it's a number of uh, different devices that are affected. Also, again, a number of different uh firmware versions here. Problem is, uh, there isn't really anything on the vendor's uh, website about any patches for it. D-Link's uh, security site actually stops about a two years ago, uh, December 2020. I guess they had no vulnerabilities, at least they had no updates maybe uh, since then. And Netgear had some updates, but nothing really related to this particular uh, model recently. So not 100% sure what's going on here. Uh, all of these vulnerabilities appear to have been reported by the same individual. And there is a GitHub repository with proof of concept exploits. The vulnerabilities do appear to affect pretty much the admin interface. So it's these typical web application vulnerabilities, as far as I can tell, based on the brief description in the uh, National Vulnerabilities Database. I'll leave it up to you what to do here, but uh, as usual, uh, don't expose the admin interface and then be on the lookout for any updates uh, coming down the pipe from Netgear and D-Link. And talking about mystery updates, Apple today also released an update for iOS. And now it does fix some bugs. It's really more one of those bug fix releases. But there is an entry on Apple's uh, vulnerability a bulletin a website stating that there will be some more details regarding vulnerabilities being addressed in this update later. Uh, right now, I don't uh, see anything uh, posted yet. Later, not sure what that exactly means. For Apple, uh, this often refers to, well, uh, later when they are going to release updates for their other operating systems too. So they may have uh, pushed this out a little bit earlier because it fixes uh, some functionality issues related to the latest hardware uh, they released. Uh, so uh, they want to hold back on the vulnerabilities until they have patches for all of their operating systems. Probably still a good idea uh, to apply uh, this update uh, sometime this week, even though it may take a while to really figure out uh, how severe these vulnerabilities are. And we got updates for uh, the VLC video player from uh, VideoLAN. Uh, this open source software, of course, uh, does have a proper security bulletin. There are a total of uh, four different vulnerabilities. And one of them is a potential uh, buffer overflow that could trigger remote code execution, CVE 2022-41325. One thing to note with uh, VLC is that that you often find uh, Google ads that uh, will appear if you're looking for VLC downloads that will direct you to malware. Please go to videolan.org in order to download any updates and uh, ignore you know, whatever uh, Google ads or so you see uh, pointing you to malicious versions of that site. In our web application security class, we have an old vulnerability we talk about, and uh, that's in the Nissan Leaf car, where the VIN number was used for authentication. I always say we really uh, should get rid of this uh, particular example. Uh, that no longer really happens. Well, I was wrong. Looks like Sirius XM, uh, the uh, satellite radio company, is doing just that. And uh, the problem here is that uh, this particular Sirius XM connected vehicle services uh, platform is included in a number of different uh, vehicles like Honda, Nissan, Infinity, and Acura are listed here in uh, the article by the register about this. And uh, by sending 
pending requests, you're actually able to also unlock the cars and perform various other actions with the car, just knowing the VIN number, which of course is conveniently displayed in the wind shield. Security researcher Sam Curry uh, found this vulnerability and uh, notified Sirius, uh, who were luckily able to fix this problem rather uh, quickly. Well, and that's all the time I have today. So thanks again for listening. And by the way, uh, this podcast is also available via Alexa. So if you have configured your flash briefing, you can add this podcast to it. And uh, let me know if it doesn't work, but uh, should work. Okay, thanks and talk to you again tomorrow.